Blog Talk Radio. This is Heart to Heart Talk Radio, part of the Enlightenment Evolution Network. I am your host, Daniel Scranton. For the next hour or so, please listen with your heart. Hello, Radio Land. This is Daniel Scranton with Heart to Heart Talk Radio. And part of the Enlightenment Evolution Network. I better mention that with my guest on the show tonight. Um, and this is Monday, December 29th, 2014. And this show, Heart to Heart, 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 Heart Talk Radio, and the opinions and, and feelings and beliefs expressed on this show do not necessarily reflect upon the Enlightenment Evolution Network and their beliefs and opinions and ideas and fantasies. So, uh, my guest tonight is the the kingpin of the Enlightenment Evolution Network, the man that started it all, Rob Gauthier. Rob, I'm going to put you on right now because I can't wait. Hey, welcome. Hey, how we do? How we doing, Daniel? Thank you for the. Uh, Warm welcome and all the love that you give me all the time, and I, I'm grateful to be on the show tonight. <laughs> Excited! Yeah, this is uh, this is a lot of fun to have you on the show. I mean, as soon as we went on the air, you know, every the energy just shifted, and uh, you know, I got a big smile on my face. Um, excited to hear about what's going on with you because there's a lot going on. Yeah. Uh... There's been a ton going on. Um, when it comes to the work uh, thing, I, I think the biggest um, change in things since the last time we spoke has been the fluent nature of my connection with RDF and not just the fluidity of it, but also the frequency of it. Um, I've, I was only channeling once in a great while <clears throat> back months and months ago, and lately I have been connecting to them with myself. So like used to, I used to say, hey, Treb, I need you to connect to Art for me, and I would wait sometimes, yeah. you know, a few days, week. Now he's coming to me directly connecting. Uh, not only that, but also connecting to a collective consciousness called the Knee Hall. And the Knee Hall are a race of future versions of humans who are connecting um, to myself through a channeled state now, and these entities were the ones who genetically modified the lizardish version uh, of Treb's animal race and created Treb's race, the Yitz. Uh, and Treb is the one who I originally started channeling, who I've grown closest to and, and have the best connection with in my mind. But all of these things have been happening, and you know, we we get into those things of the actual progression of the work and the actual outcome of the work, but the work in general, I mean, so many things are happening on that front. I, I don't know if you want me to go through lots of those things or, or just if you were basing on that specific idea of what's been going on. Well, what, do you, do you, what connection, if anything, is there or do you perceive there to be between the emergence of Aradif and the uh, connection with the Nihal. Well, I believe in my own heart, and me and Kleena have talked about this for a while, I think that because I've opened up more in my own self, because I went from doing the channeling for majority full-time and then also carrying on a full-time job to more so doing only channeling as a full-time job for the last year and a half, almost two years now, that energy shifts over so that it's becoming more of a part of me in general. So through doing that, I'm opening channels in myself. I'm becoming more resonant with Treb's energy, which means I'm becoming less resistant of my own self. I'm, I'm throwing out more aspects of the inflamed ego, and I'm trying to really stay centered and stay in the now and do all the things that Treb's been teaching for years and years that I practice on, but I'm starting to achieve those things. So through that, there opens up this large connection with Aradith. Now, 
once I connect to Ardiff, the information that comes through him is different than Treb. Treb is very heart-centered, high in knowledge, and I won't take anything away from Treb by saying that Ardiff <laughs> is better or, or larger, but Treb is centered in the heart, and he dips into the wisdom when he needs to. Ardiff is always in the wisdom as well as in the heart because he's graduated the heart. But when you hear him, it only comes out to a lot of people like wisdom. Those who listen to him frequently and feel his vibration instead of just listening to his words, they're the ones who incorporate the heart aspect of Ardiff because he does. He has huge love. It's just hearing the way he uh, manifests outwardly. It's very difficult for some people to feel that. And, and people have given me that feedback. They're like, wow, Ardiff's kind of a, a straight and narrow, right-on-the-money guy, you know, doesn't doesn't go much into lovey-dovey stuff like Treb. But in all honesty, his amount of love is just its just as big as Treb's, if not larger. And that part in itself um, really shows when you feel the message instead of listening to it. So I, I think mm -hmm. that through that connection with Ardiff, through the expansion that Art has given me, like I said before, I'm able to connect to Art if without Treb as a buffer, which means I am raising my vibration. I am uh, unplugging all those energetic blockages I had before, and through that, that's what opened up for this large energy called the knee hall. Now, as wonderful as Treb is, as wonderful as Ardiff is, and as much as they contrast, the knee hall is even more different than both of them. The knee hall is a collective consciousness. I think they said over 10 billion, right? Yeah, 10 billion future human versions that moved out to another star. So this is 10 billion Trebs and Ardiffs all mixed up into one consciousness, and it doesn't come from a polarity of type 1, like Treb or Ardiff say, hey, I'm a type 1, um, you know, I only live in love, I only live in wisdom, I only live not wanting to separate myself, those types of things, to complete neutrality where, you know, um, although Treb and Ardiff will tell you that killing someone and loving someone with all your heart is the same thing, they would never step past that line of loving because that's how they feel. The uh, collective consciousness doesn't have actions because they're not physical, but they see equality in those and they don't have a preference. It's just, it, it's hard to explain the difference for most people, but I know that you yourself feel that experience between uh, a difference of a collective consciousness, like the um, Hathors are collective, the Creators are collective, but Ophelia is one consciousness. So you could tell the difference in perspective mm -hmm. and energy itself. Yeah. So, Ardiff, is Kalina, is Kalina right there with you? Did you just ask Kalina a question while you were talking? I asked Kalina questions. She is right here with me. Uh, she's hi, listening into the show. Oh, Welcome. she says hi back. Hey, Daniel. Yeah. Oh, That's really cute. That's <laughs> wonderful. Uh -huh. So, Ardiff, then, is a singular uh, physical still has physical uh, body because you refer to Ardith as a he. Yes, and and that's uh, some of the, the very first drawing I got was this lady named Awaken Within, um, and the way she drew yeah. it, a lot of people felt a feminine vibe, and then Kalina drew her perception of them, uh, which was a little different. Uh, well, quite a bit different from the one Awaken with Andrew and the physical and the energy is a little different. But every time someone's drawn them, they perceive him as a feminine energy, which is very funny to me because he has a very masculine energy. But he is a single collective or he is a single consciousness that's not in a physical existence. And let me explain this a little. Okay. When you're looking at densities, uh, consciousness densities, this shows the growth and evolution of an entity or a being or one individual consciousness throughout a progression. We as humans, if we're looking at time linear, have begun our journey as type, or uh, not type one, I'm sorry, first density entities, which are rocks, dust. This is the coalescing of the planet coming together, the forming of the earth and the moon, um, all the planets, and, and we join the one consciousness called Earth. So we got to experience being elements. 
we experienced being rocks and water and fire and electricity, and then there was time for growth. We were done being the first density beings, and through consciousness itself, the only thing that consciousness cares about is expansion, okay? So we expand, and it's part of a cycle from a larger cycle. I'm not going to get into all that stuff. That's the density masterclass stuff. I'll get into that later. This stuff uh, desires, requires expansion. So through that expansion, they take on the single cell life forms through evolution. People say it's evolution or is manifestation of your reality. That Well, it's both of them. We manifest through evolution and we grow our consciousness through physical evolution as well. But the only reason the physical evolves is because consciousness does and needs expansion. So we go through the animal experience, so on and so forth. What Ardith is specifically is the last stop before non-physical. He is the sixth density entity, which means he has already went through the first density, which is um, survival. It's just existence, period. All elemental things exist. That's their lot in life. That's their conscious evolution. And then the next step, mm-hmm. animals, what does that do? It's to, um, it's to multiply. It's to expand. It's to um, appropriate, if you will. So all of the second density entities go through that, plus simple versions of emotions, but it's basically just existence. And then humans come mm-hmm. along in version three or third density. So each step has their own steps. Our dip is in the last step. The step above him are oversouls and then planetary consciousnesses, which don't mm-hmm. exist through experience as physical entities. They only exist as physical manifestations of a non-physical being. And I know that's a lot to deal with, and I know that's kind of complex maybe for some people who are listening, but overall, the Earth that we see is just a byproduct of a being that's non-physical, that is all the oversouls in this planet connected. And Aradith is right before that oversoul step. So he's huge consciousness. They say that fourth density is three times larger, uh, approximately three times larger than third density. So before 2012, we have the capabilities throughout how many ever lifetimes it takes us to get through fourth density to be at least three or four times more consciousness Um, integration than we did as humans in the third density. After that, it can be five times in the fifth density and even five times more than fifth density in sixth. So this consciousness is like having a thousand humans into one physical body. And this is why art is so profound. The fact that I connect to him and I talk to him and that connection is growing only shows the profoundness of what and who he truly is. When you hear artists speak, many people who have heard him when the connection is good, they say, oh, my God, this is most profound. This is just wonderful. This is uh, on par with some of the most profound channelers I've ever heard. But what people don't realize, I've only started connecting to artists recently. My connection Mm -hmm. is so much less than what it could be because the practice hasn't been there. The more that we practice, the better that connection gets. And you know that through being you know, channeling yourself and then connecting to many different consciousnesses. Oh, yeah, for sure. Yeah. I also, yeah, it's, it's about familiarity uh, with, the, with the beings you're channeling and also with the content of what you're channeling, too. I think sometimes if there's something new that's coming through, it's like it can it can come out like, you know, chiseling in stone or something, you know, that kind of <laughs> very <laughs> deliberate for me anyway, because it's like uh, I'm so conscious of, of what's coming through. Um, so did you have a, uh, what was your introduction to art? If, how did that unfold? Well, now, understanding when I first knew Treb, I didn't channel Treb. I, I had connected with him for two years before I ever channeled him one time. This was in meditation state. I was literally seeing him as if I was seeing a human across from me, but it's in a deep meditation. That's how me and Treb started. 
And during this two years, Treb would always reference an entity by a nickname that he gave him, which was Dnib Cygnus, which is C Y N G U S. A lot of people um, think I'm saying sickness, <laughs> but it's Cygnus, mm-hmm. Dnib Cygnus. And I always asked him who it was. That's his teacher. Like Treb has been my teacher throughout my growth mm-hmm. and throughout my period. This was his teacher. And it was one that was very well connected to him. And I said, wow, it's amazing. So uh, 2012 rolls around. And a man named Jefferson Viscardi approached me and asked me if I would like to do a book. What we would do is he would ask questions about Treb, his race, and then we would uh, transcribe the book together and write a book. And I said, you know what, that is amazing, let's do it. We did, and through the evolution of this book, it took a lot of turns. Um, Jefferson would ask, well, you have this job, spiritual advisor, or connection to other people with spiritual means, teaching the message. Why don't you connect to two other entities on your planet like that? So Treb would bring in the other entities who did the same type of work he did. And then he'd say, well, what about the other types of things that can be done on the planet yet, which is something that he gave the nickname for, long story, so I'll bypass that one. Um, then mm-hmm. he says, why don't you get some entities that are out there that you connect with, like you do, Rob, um, and, and bring forward messages that they feel like they want to give to Earth? Here comes Ardip. Uh Out of the blue, I did not even know that Ardip was the same as Dean M. Cygnus until after I listened to the recording. Um, he just said he was going to bring forth these entities. When he brought forward Aradif, to me and my perception being an external person, because I don't remember the sessions while they're happening, when I listen to them later, then I'm able to finally experience those. I read this thing and listened to this one portion that Aradif gave, and it was the most profound information in the book. And what that information was about was the density Uh, and dimensions information. He was telling us how the universe is constructed. Now, I had heard models um, that were a watered-down, slighter, less comprehensive version of this. And and mind you, this is only 20-some pages. He elaborated a brilliant structure in 20-some pages. When I look back, I see how much less he gave us then than what he's giving us now. So to see Mm -hmm. how watered down I thought other things were up to that, I see this wonderful construction of a universal consciousness through evolution of consciousness as well as the physical parts of the universe, and then I bring it all back and just was blown away. And ever since then, before I started channeling him more recently, I only ever connected to him four or five other times. And when I did, it was always through Treb. It was always secondary like it was, like, the first time he came through on the book was him connecting to Treb. So I channeled Treb, and then Treb uh, channeled Ardip, and that's how I received the information. Now it's different. Now I'm able to channel Ardip. And that change in just the way that the energy worked was so much more profound because it, it brings forward a new balance of energy, and through that new balance of energy floods information Uh, The information floods through that gateway and and just provides a much higher level of information and energy that goes with the information. Many people who are listening to channeling now are developing their intuitive skills. They're developing their sensory um, perceptions, their sensory projections, as well as the interjections of others and they're able to feel the energy from these different channels. When someone sits down with their eyes closed, they don't need to hear one word, and they could tell you, this is the Hathors, this is Treb, this is Bashar, this is the Mm -hmm. Pleiadian Mm -hmm. Collective, these are the Zs. People know. They feel it. And once that energy shifted, and I listened to Ardith coming through me in a different energy, it was just so different, so much more profound than what it was the very first time I connected to him. Mm. So, in speaking about the densities, uh, has Aradif said whether or not humans have crossed the threshold 
into the fourth density? Absolutely. Him and him and Trent both have talked about this. Actually, they talked about it before the threshold occurred. They told everyone, um, Ardith not so much. Ardith just recently spoke on this in the last year, but Treb had always told people, once December 21st, 2012 comes, you will be in the fourth density. The only mm-hmm. reason that it doesn't feel like it to some of you is because you haven't integrated that consciousness. So we're already in the fourth density. We just need to incorporate the fourth density portions of our consciousness to us to be able to start experiencing it more as a fourth density. And it's amazing because people who have let go in the last year, this last year has been a huge year for everybody. Anyone who's dared to let go of parts of their ego, who have dared to allow themselves to be themselves, have firsthandedly experienced more phenomenon in how people would perceive as phenomenon than ever before. They're getting vivid dreams. They're getting visualizations and meditations, audio clarency. They are getting literally every type of communication on their own accord. This is not going to channelers or psychics or using different tools or variations of tools. They are directly connecting with their own wakened conscious mind or at least in a sleep state that is truly vivid and truly uncentered lucid dreaming and remembering this and this represents the proof that we are already in fourth density we just had to align ourselves with it more people are doing that now and the more people that do the more that these experiences will continue to roll into their own personal life for me Just in the last year and a half, two years, I'd made so many different changes from the Rob I was three years ago. And the Rob three years ago, I love that Rob because that Rob (laughs) was ten times better than the Rob five years before that. So we keep growing and progressing. (laughs) And the more that we shed, the more that we become ourselves, the more of us we see. And that's what this process is. That's the process that all of these entities No matter which channeler you talk to, if they are channeling about creating your own reality and about using your own heart, feelings, and mind to create your reality around you, then you will hear the same message spread throughout different perspectives, different varieties, but they will all tell you how much more we have of this coming ahead. And once we let go of that self, I mean, it's nothing but good times. And and I've seen so many people (laughs) have a brilliant time in this last year. Next year is going to be twice that good. And I'm ready. Yeah. Amen. (laughs) So I want to talk a little, (laughs) I want to talk, not, I mean, sometimes I look at my life and I'm, and I'm just like, wow, are, are you kidding? Like, your life is amazing. Like you, you, you know, like it's hard to believe that I ever that I that I have a problem in life. You know, because because from the broad strokes, like looking at it from the from the big picture, it's like an amazing life. You know, it's it's I couldn't have dreamt of this type of life. Well, I could have dreamt of it, but you know, I don't know if I even dared to to. Uh, ask for all the things that uh that I have, you know, and it's just been uh it's been one blessing after another. So yeah, I, I can I can say from personal experience, yeah, it's totally getting better all the time and uh yeah and and I can see more on the horizon. Very, very you, you know easily. you know, Daniel, in my honest opinion too, a lot of people have had better experiences. What I found out, and people think that because we channel or do spiritual work, we're immune to our own stupidity or our own (laughs) inability to create the reality in the way we desire. And I highly speak out on this a lot. We are just as human as anybody else is. But the one thing that I found, the reason why you're having these experiences that feel so much better and different the reason that I am, it's not because negative things or perceivably negative things come your way or adversities 
but it's the manner in which you take them on. It's the matter in which you decide to perceive a specific situation. When we're looking at these situations and saying, oh my God, this is horrible, this is devastating, then our life becomes tragic. When we start taking these things on as highly difficult things to, to see and to take on, that's when it comes hard for us. But the more that we let go of the idea that this is here to punish me from my own stupid creation and embrace an idea that sometimes these things have to roll right into us from the downhill perspective. They've got to hit us sometimes in order for us to grow. When we see it in that way, that's yeah. when things get better because it's we're always going to have those hills to climb. But when you can climb them, and you're ready to climb them, and you're seeing it as an exercise instead of a chore, <laughs> then mm -hmm. it becomes mm -hmm. useful to you, you know? Mm -hmm. uh, amen. <laughs> um, <laughs> <laughs> so I'm curious uh, to learn some more about the Hall Collective. Um, you're saying their future... Uh, incarnation of humans that are living off world somewhere um, future meaning uh different uh you know like different part or different uh level of force density or uh what what exactly are the nigh hall okay now this is how it was explained to me i don't have the true nature of their history. When I ask Trev about the Nihal's history, they say, look into your, your present. That's their history. Um, the Nihal has recently <laughs> said that we are in the top 20% of having them as our future. So that means out of all the possibilities of what humans could be, we're in the 80 percentile or higher. So when we look at it that way, then we could see what their past was. Now, the way that it's presented to me is that they are a collective consciousness who is not in physical existence any longer. So this means they went through fourth density, through fifth, and through sixth, and are now non-physical again. They are in between incarnation cycles. So the next mm -hmm. incarnation cycle they will be will be whatever planet they decide to pop up on next as a part of the mm -hmm. uh, future humans. But what happens apparently in their history, mankind leaves the planet, and they don't just leave yeah. to this one place. They leave to multiple planets across the galaxy. One specific planet um, that is inhabited is around this star called Beta Leporis. And Beta Leporis, I'm not sure about what kind of star, what planet they lived on, but they inhabited it and inhabited it quite well, apparently enough to get the population to 10 billion. Now, by the time we're ready to leave planet here on Earth, I don't know what our population will be. But to me, it sounds like a pretty healthy and hearty uh, version. The way I understand it is after they left Earth and inhabited the planet, then they had many generations on their new planet. And what happens to a race when they leave their planet and join another they are joining a seventh density being known as a planet. The planet is only the physical shell of the energy that encompasses this collective consciousness, mm. and there wasn't any third, fourth, fifth, sixth density beings living on it. So it was only first density and second density beings. Now, they have a collective consciousness of their own, but when humans land on that planet, then what happens is all of the humans have this collective consciousness of part of the earth energy that goes with them. And they bring this into a new planet. And a lot of times when new races try to inhabit a new planet, they die or they have to leave if the energy of the planet and the race is not compatible. But in this case, apparently it was. So they lived there and lived well. They lived there and they clicked with that energy automatically. And Very cool. our dip is a good example of that, too, Kalina just reminded me of. They used to live in a uh, planet somewhere in the Pleiades um, constellation, as we see um, Pleiades from Earth. It's a huge 
star system. It's almost a nursery of stars that are newly growing stars plus stars that are there. So this place has dozens and dozens of huge stars, thousands of different races living in it. Our race pulled out of the Pleiades and moved to Deneb. And on the star called Deneb, they found a planet that was compatible with them. So they started their new race, and that's why Ardiff's race is called the Ancient Pleiadians, because of that co-creation. Mm-hmm. And even their bodies yeah. begun to morph. And Kleena's explaining this, mm-hmm. too. She's sharing, but she's not close enough to the mic to hear. So I'm just uh, reiterating mm-hmm. what Kleena said. Kleena and Ardiff have worked extensively with each other and shared a lot of information. Um, what what they did is they moved to that specific system and just like the knee hall at least from how i believe it hasn't been uh, foretold or foreshadowed yet but all of the energy that happened when these uh, knee hall entities moved their planet was the same as ardip with his race the physical body begins to change and it's not Mm -hmm. because of environmental variances which yes it could be um physically or scientifically but consciousness is now merging and that's what that's what i meant by two collective consciousnesses now become one the nihal moved there their collective consciousness integrated so the physical body must adapt to the new energy mm-hmm. that is the collective consciousness so it, it's a mm-hmm. very unique routine and i'm glad to to see it being played out through Ardiv because it gives me a better understanding of how it works in general. And Treb's touched on this many times throughout the years, but uh, seeing the Nihal and um, the ancient Pleiadians gives us a real, uh, real-time real version of that, I think. Yeah, for sure. Well, it's also fascinating. It really, yeah. it really makes me... It makes me long for another... Star Trek type show to come out because I, I kind of like ran through all the Star Treks that I that I wanted to watch and now I'm like oh man I would I love that feeling of like uh, traveling through space um, and exploring and uh, it's it's so much easier when you know someone writes 125 episodes of a show <laughs> for me to do that. <laughs> um, <laughs> well, you know, have you noticed that's been reflected back to us as a race? All of these wonderful TV shows, all of these movies. I have watched movies in the last five years that have blew my hair back. And when I made my shift of consciousness from that depressed, disconnected person to the person who cared about my spiritual well-being, when I made that transition. I slowly watch my movie intake almost taper off completely. But every great once in a while, there'll be a a movie that pops up that just calls to me. And when I watch that, it is a direct representation of one of two things. Uh, It's either, honestly, it's either about something that I have high interest in, But most of the time, what it comes down to is something that shows our consciousness evolution or something that shows where our race is headed to. All of these Star Trek things, even the new Star Wars, the old Star Wars, all these things show us what a multicultural galactic um, society is like. And I think, in all honesty, as long as we continue growing in the way we are now, that's where we're headed. And this is foreshadowing for all of us to see what we can do if we desire that expansion. So it's exciting. I I get the same, uh, I'm kind of dorky in that way. I get the same super school kid excitedness or the same uh, thing like a kid getting ready to open Christmas presents. Every time I see something new and and, um, that gives us greater insights to those things. Yeah, it's it's so many. There's so many different aspects of who we are to explore out there. Um, so oh yeah. You what? What's the next uh, event or uh, offering uh, that you're going to be doing? Well, there, there's quite a few of them that are coming up. But if we're looking at near future, the next one I've got coming up is uh, January third. Um, Kalina's going to be moderating 
I will be presenting. I will also have Aradip and possibly Treb presenting the Advanced Density Masterclass 2.0. And what this is, is all the things that we've been talking about, densities, dimensions, those are 101 level or Advanced Density Masterclass 1.0 level. We're taking it up a notch. We're, we're going into the deepest aspects of expansion of consciousness and the way it evolves. And honestly, this is one of the ones I'm most excited about because I know in this specific situation, I'm going to learn a lot too. I'm going to be learning with everyone else. And that excites me. That's coming up January 3rd. Then next month, myself and you will be online together yeah. for walking your own path. And that's going to be February 7th, I believe, um, which is going to be an amazing event where me and you are both channeling, sharing our hearts, sharing our minds, and then channeling ourselves too with all of these great entities who will help people look into the best way for themselves to manifest their realities. Um, yeah. Something that Lena did that was amazing, she worked on a 10-step program which is something that Treb invented, Ardiff refined, and we all shared. Kalina mastered this, made these beautiful PDF files that takes you through every 10 step. It's called 10 oh. Step to Belief Change. And this is something we only charge $5 for, but Kalina is almost done with the Ardiff website. It should be done within a couple of weeks, and we're going to release that to the public for free. And everyone will be able to go through this 10 step system to show you step-by-step step in an advanced process of how to get over the limiting belief systems that all of us have. So all of those things are coming up. I've got a million more events uh, ahead of me. I don't know how much time you want me to babble on about it, but those are, are, are the nearest ones to this point in time. And then we have the channel panel, the big one, in September, and we just got our... Yes. Uh, eighth presenter, Sean Randall, who I've been in talks with uh, about being on my show and had no idea that you were even considering her for the channel panel. So that was really fun when you announced that the other day. Yes, uh, Sean Randall will be there. She is the lady, the blonde-haired lady, um, the one that was opposite Wendy Kennedy, as the only other female on the very first Tuning In a documentary, Tuning In Spirit Channelers of America. Mm -hmm. She will be there as will Wendy Kennedy, Nora Harold, me, you. Um, then we'll have uh, the one and only Sean Swanson, Brad Johnson, and Lee Harris. And you could not get a, a, a more awesome lineup here because these – our eight world-renowned channelers, um, the youngest of two, which are myself and you and Brad, who have been doing this much less than the others, but have done it long enough to perfect the craft that we are doing and, and gain notoriety from the channeling community. So we have world-renowned channelers, eight of them, 16 hours of events, 10 hours of channeling, September uh, 19th and 20th in Los Angeles, we're going to be going to the Holiday Inn LAX. Um, it'll be $120 a day, 200 for both days if you want to show up live, or we're doing live stream, and we're going to be doing those for $50 per day on those, and that will be um, two days for 100 or one for 50 And what what was I forgetting? <laughs> Uh, oh, yes, and um, that will be uh, in September and going. There's only one other event I've got that's in the line right now, so I might as well mention that really quickly while we're at it. Asheville, um, February uh, – oh, no, I'm sorry. That's April 3rd, 4th, and 5th, Asheville, North Carolina, one of the spiritual vortexes of the East Coast. Actually, in my opinion, the spiritual vortex of the East Coast. Huge metaphysical town. Um, we're doing a three-day extensive channeling workshop, learning to channel, doing channeling, learning to meditate. And the coolest part, we're going out CE5. This is only 30 seats available. We've already got five seats taken, so we've got 25. And at February 15th, the prices go up $150. 
three-day event. We'll take care of your dinner while you're with us. Um, we're going to be together at least six hours a day for the three days. Amazing stuff. That's the last plug I'll give. So <laughs> thank you for allowing yeah. me to, to share these things with everyone. But I'm excited about every single one of these things coming up. It's going to be huge. And uh, also, uh, Jeffrey Hoppy and myself and John Kelly will be doing an online um, event, too, later this year, but we're still working out the details. Oh, very cool. Yes. Very, very cool. Um, so what do you, do you want to do anything like take a break before uh, we start taking the callers and questions? And if you are listening online uh, and you want to call in, it's 347 308 Eight seven eight eight to get on uh, hold and ask your question of whoever Rob's going to channel for us tonight. Um, we, you know, it's to, it's fine with me if you want to choose or you want to. Do, do you ever let them choose who comes through? Um, tonight, I w- I was thinking about uh, bringing through Arda. I'm not comfortable yeah. enough yet with a knee hall interacting with others because I've never done that. They've yeah. only come through three times. <laughs> And they've said what they wanted to say, so I don't know how the question <laughs> and answer will work out. But Ardiff, yeah. I believe, um, would be the best bet. His information is flowing well. And on your show last time, I did uh, Treb. I brought Treb forward. So I think Ardiff is probably our best bet for tonight, which will be uh, a really fun energy. And, yes, I, I would require at least three to five minutes to neutralize my energy. Um, before I can start with a breathing and the connection process, if that's all right. Yeah, go ahead. All right, well, I'm going to do that, and I'll be back in three to five minutes. And uh, if I put my headphones on and you're playing um, uh, announcements or something, I'll just wait for you to come back. Okay. All right, we'll see you there, bud. Yep. I think what I will do is I'll play the announcements for the for the network. And uh, again, if you're listening and you want to talk to Ardith, which is a huge opportunity for anyone who's listening, please call us, 347-308-8788. You'll be on hold and you will get to ask a question. And here are the announcements. Hi, this is Karen Newman from the show About Oneness. And here's what's coming up on the Enlightenment Evolution Network 1 and 2, starting on Monday, December the 29th, until Sunday, January the 4th. Simply put, Rob Gothier, founder of the EEN and the host of the show that started it all, the Enlightenment Evolution Hour, has put together the greatest metaphysical radio network ever. Seven days a week, we have shows that will aid you on your path to enlightenment, evolution, and ascension. On EEN1, on Monday, 7.30 p.m. Pacific, 10.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, Heart to Heart Talk Radio with your host, Daniel Scranton. Join Daniel and his featured guests discussing a wide variety of metaphysical topics. Daniel channels the Creators, the Hathors, Ophelia the Fairy, Archangel Michael, and the latest, the Unicorn Collective. Daniel and his guests will take phone calls and questions, and it's sure to generate high-frequency discussions. You can find more about Daniel on his website, danielscranton.com, and also on Facebook. Go to the Events tab on Daniel's website to learn more about Daniel's upcoming events. Daniel's guest on Monday will be Rob Gautier. On Tuesdays at noon Pacific Standard Time, 3 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, please join hosts Megan Crandelmeyer and Rachel Archelaus for Radio Inspiration, Expression, and Abundance. For their show, Soulfulpreneur, spiritual business specialists Rachel and Megan will bring you inspiring conversations with people who are living their soul purpose. Frequent guests include psychic mediums, channelers, coaches, artists, and authors. Wednesday nights, 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, 6 p.m. Pacific, is the show that started it all, the Enlightenment Evolution Hour with host Rob Gothier. Rob channels Treb on the first Wednesday of each month and will take callers' questions. On the third Wednesday, he will have special guests such as guest channelers and other metaphysical teachers. The other two Wednesdays are freestyle call-in shows to discuss whatever callers have on their minds. Tune into Rob on Wednesday nights, and you can also find him at trebchanneling.com or on Facebook on the Enlightenment Evolution Network group page. Rob has a few special announcements. Every Sunday at 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, 6 p.m. Pacific, 
trebchanneling.com host an hour-long meditation class. Please go to trebchanneling.com to register. Coming up on January 3rd is the online interactive Density Masterclass. The cost is just $25 for this four-hour study of densities, dimensions, universal constructs, and much, much more. Then from April 3rd to April the 5th, 2015, you can spend three days with Treb and Ardeef in Asheville, North Carolina, learning to channel during the lunar eclipse. This is a three-day workshop on channeling, only 30 spots available. And on September 19th, Treb Channeling proudly presents the Channel Panel, Awakening from Within. Channelers include Lee Harris, Sean Swanson, Daniel Scranton, Nora Harold, Wendy Kennedy, Brad Johnson, Rob Gothier, and Daryl Anka. This special live event is available in person and also on live stream. The cost of admission is $120 per day or $200 for both days. And on live stream, $50 per day or $100 for both days. Go to trebchanneling.com to purchase a ticket. On Thursday night, 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, 6 p.m. Pacific, join host Philip Malika for the Consciousness Evolution Hour. Join Philip and his special guest and co-host as they discuss the shift, ascension, timelines, metaphysical concepts, and the fifth dimension. Find Philip on the Consciousness Evolution 2.0 group page on Facebook and also on YouTube. On Fridays, The Earth Experience with Kalina Angel, 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, 6 p.m. Pacific. The Earth Experience explores our soul's expansion through our human experiences on Earth. Kalina will help you navigate and expand through these exciting times and the confusions that we are manifesting as 5D beings. Saturdays at 10 a.m. Pacific Time, 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, Victoria Vives hosting Earth Sky People Radio, living in harmony with Mother Earth and awakening to an intergalactic society, bringing you to greater awareness regarding starseeds and extraterrestrial life, living in harmony with one another, with Mother Earth and with life beyond Earth, the transformative power of music, frequency, and sound, shamanism, ancestral wisdom, and the star nations, intentional communities, self-sustainable and regenerative living, the interstellar alliance, or planet Earth becoming a part of an intergalactic society, and much, much more. For January the 3rd, on January the 3rd, join Victoria for a Q&A with Sasha Stone regarding any details on joining the New Earth Nation, forming intentional communities, and becoming sovereign. You can learn more about Victoria and her upcoming events on victoriavivas.com forward slash radio. On Sundays, 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, 11 a.m. Pacific, is my show, About Oneness. About Oneness is a weekly radio program focused on celebrating the ongoing conscious awakening of our planet and our realization of oneness. I am an integrated channel, medium, Reiki master, and metaphysical teacher. I have a varied and diverse background, including that of being a singer, dancer, writer, as well as working in the sport, nutrition, and fitness world. As a channel, I bring forward the information of my non-physical guides called Theos, whose message is always that of oneness and unconditional love. This show for me is about integrating all of my experiences and following my highest excitement, which is tapping into the truth of the universe. If you would like to learn more about me, my upcoming guests, as well as see many videos on channeling and teachings, you can go to aboutoneness.com. My guest on January the 4th is Matt Kahn, a spiritual teacher and highly attuned empathetic healer. His spontaneous awakening arose out of an out-of-body experience at the age of eight and his direct experiences with ascended masters and archangels throughout his life. As a result, he brings forth revolutionary teachings that assist energetically sensitive beings in healing the body, awakening the soul, and transforming reality throughout the power of love. Matt will be on live and he will be taking callers questions. Be sure to call in early because the phone lines are sure to fill up. On EEN Network 2, on Saturday evenings, 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, 6 p.m. Pacific, the Pied Piper and Texas Rebel hosting Disclosure Now. Disclosure Now is the On the Edge of Our Seats show that covers all topics of disclosure, from the world's most famous and obscure UFO cases to cryptozoology, conspiracies, and all things that go bump in the night. Pipe Piper started his journey in Michigan in 1993 as a preteen seeing Bigfoot and never could get enough in investigating all things paranormal. Texas Rebel is a wild Texas man who loves the same journey and has been studying these same things for years. Join them as they cover all things in the human experience that just cannot be answered by anyone. 
And remember, you never have to miss any show on the Enlightenment Evolution Network 1 or 2. All shows are available to listen to again immediately after they air on Blog Talk Radio on Playback, or you can go to the Enlightenment Evolution Network YouTube page. All right, back to the show. Thank you, Karen. And uh, Rob, I'm sure you're back with us, right? Yeah, sorry about that. I, I had to unmute. Um, uh, I heard on the announcement that uh, it was announced as Daryl Anchor being a part of Channel Panel. I, I just wanted to clear that up oh. with maybe the listeners. It was only a prospective person who we had asked earlier who we thought might join but was not able to due to conflict of schedule. So I just wanted to let everyone know that the Daryl Anchor will not be at the Channel Panel this year. <clears throat> Oh, yeah, that went right past me. That went right over my head, but uh, glad you caught it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> All right. Thank you. <laughs> I'm, so, uh, I'm ready. I'm just going to take a couple more deep breaths before I get started. Sure. Um, I, I had a little delay on my uh, thing, so just uh, about another 30 seconds, and we're ready to rock and roll. Okay. Anyone who's um, on the phone right now who's listening on their phone, if you press the number one on your keypad, I will see that you want to ask a question, and then I will call on you as soon as we get our diff going here. Um, All right. I'm ready when you are, brother. Yeah. All right. Um, Ardiff comes in with some oming. Uh, he's very quick yeah. compared to Treb. Treb's a little longer, so all who are listening, if they like to ohm with him, they may. Uh, it might help you get the energy tuned in, but um, just enjoy yourself. And if you're asking questions, remember the entities that we channel are reflections of your information that's held within your higher self and within your higher guidance. So the more you're relaxed and the more you're having fun, the more that energy will come back to you in a reflection of the answer. So have fun, and we'll see you all on the other side. Great. I'm going to mute myself and ohm, too. All right. I'll <laughs> see you then. That is A R I D I F, and this is it spelled. We know that there are many inquiries amongst all of you. You may begin when you desire. Hi, Aradif. Good evening, Daniel. You are loved. <laughs> I can feel it. I had a uh, yes. question come up for me uh, and Rob. 
while I was listening to the toning uh, that was coming through him, uh, it reminded me very much of the toning that I do when I channel the Hathors. And when Rob channels uh, Treb, when he tones, it reminds me very much of the toning I do for the creators. And when Treb says yes, or Rob channels the yeses through Treb, it reminds me very much of the yeses. Curious about what what is this connection here uh, between either myself and Rob or the entities I'm channeling and the entities Rob is channeling or, or these similarities are um, they're they're too big to be coincidences. Yes, what we can tell you most directly of these things are that yourself and Rob are two of a similar energy. That when both of you channel, although your channeling techniques are varying, although your energies and overall vibrations are different in the signature at the core portion of the fractalized consciousness, that in fact, your way of connection is very similar. You are both what you would call vibrational toning entities who are connecting through the variance vibrations of toning, the overtone sounds, the oming sounds, all of these different vibrational sounds are coming out in order for your throat chakra to be aligned with the vibration that is fitting for the verbal communication. As you are aware, all entities who verbalize through a channeling technique are working from throat chakra throat chakra most directly. And when you are connecting to your throat chakra, it must be aligned with an energy that is fitting for communication. Now, when you have achieved your alignment as same, the energy as Rob within himself, as he is aligning with the energy of the throat chakra, this is where the communication is coming from, and this is when it is ready to bring forward the entities. When an entity connects to its own vibrational signature at the core front of its own fractalized consciousness is merging with your vibrational tone with its own independent fractalized consciousness signature. Both of those signatures overlap. In the instance of the yeses specifically, these are a manifestation of the most high excitement available for the entities in which you are connecting to. The word that springs through both of your minds as the highest form of affirmation is yes. This is why it is brought forward. This is why it is brought forward in the direct manner in which it is. The throat chakra alignment through your deeply connected verbalized oming sounds as well as through your own perception of what a conscious or trans channeler who works with throat chakra directly oming or using sound variants of the word ohms is what is similar and also what helps you align with the yes, the ohm, and the connection simultaneously. Well, what, that's a wonderful response. Um, yes. Thank you for that. Yeah. yeah. Um, I'm going to take another uh, question from a caller now, and this caller, you've been waiting patiently on hold here. You are from the 248 area code, and you're on now with Eridish and Rob and me. Hello? Yes. Hi. Hi. How's everybody doing? Good. This is, um, this is Gianni. Oh, hi, Gianni. How you doing? Good. Okay, my question is, does my oversoul or my higher self have anything to tell me? Like a message or, or anything? Yes, it has many things that it wishes to express to you most directly. First of all, we must ask you a question if this is acceptable to you. Yes. Your excitement. You do not have to answer this aloud, but answer this in your own mind. What are your excitements being shown to you for? What excitements are being shown to you? First of all, we will say that this is the most vibrant tone allowed that the Oversoul brings to your direct fractal consciousness via 
your thought processes, your excitements, your emotional state, and your desire to do these things. It is being brought forward because this is the highest excitement of the oversoul within your fractalized consciousness plan. Each one of you, before you are born, are planning your existence to go through experiences that once you have never went through before. Now, when you are connecting to these new experiences, it brings the entirety of the Oversoul's expansion. When you are doing these things, you are finding new vibrational frequencies to share with the entirety of its Oversoul, as well as designing something in which you can be excited of. This is what one portion of message that we may share with you in this evening is. For all of you who are listening to excitements, listen to them well, as this is a portion of your oversoul expressing what it is that you once desired before incarnation. Now, with that being said, you may vary your plan in any way you desire. Free will is at the utmost importance. You may do whatever it is that excites you in any moment. Now, with that being said, we will express the specific messages brought forward. There is an entity who resides within your higher echelons of the Oversoul, perhaps as you would see this in the power structure or the consciousness structure that is designed, something in the area of fifth density. This entity itself is not giving a name nor a place of origin, but the message is coming through very clearly. There are things that you have looked at within yourself that you have not been happy with. You have looked upon yourself in a negative light for at least three years of one specific subject. You are aware of the subject. It does not need to be shared in a public format. Whatever it is that you have been going through for three years that you have beaten yourself up about, it is time to look slightly deeper in the surface of energy in which it is coming to you at. If it is something that is showing you something in yourself you do not like, it is time to examine that specific idea because what this fractal consciousness is expressing to you most directly is that all things are perception-based. It is because you are seeing this thing in the light that you are seeing it that makes it feel as difficult. I know that Rob and Daniel were speaking of this before, so if you re-listen to the portions of perceptions building your reality, it will give you greater insight. But most directly, when it comes to looking at yourself and the way that you see yourself, try to be easier upon yourself. Look at yourself with great love. Look at yourself with forgiveness. Understand you are not tied to anything that is behind you, that all things in your past are not tying you to what you are in this moment, and know that within this universal structure, within the oneness of us all, you are loved. Thank you. Hmm, that was lovely. Yeah, thank you for uh, calling, Johnny, and asking a question. You're welcome. Thanks. Uh, yeah, I'm sure that was very helpful. Yes. Okay. Yes, of course. <laughs> uh, so now we're going to go to another call and another question uh, from the 631 area code. You are now live on the air. Hello. Hi, Daniel. Hello. Hi, Artida, Rob, and Kalina. Thank you for taking my call. Yeah. Yes. Um, I wanted to know, similar to the previous caller, I wanted to know if for this new year, if my higher self has anything to tell me, anything that's precise to me, anything that is more information that I can learn more about myself, where I should be directing my energies, what I should be focusing on, anything that I'm missing, that I'm not looking at, just anything that's precise to what's going on with me. Yes, and what we will tell you, we will not repeat from the previous engagement with the entity that we spoke to before this one. We will not bore you with the same old idea of your excitements and exploring those, but those are being elaborated not only to you, not only to the previous caller, but to all entities who are within the vicinity of this vibration and message this evening. So be aware of that. Now, when you look forward... There are entities of many natures, of many varieties that are coming forward. We will only express the view of the two who are coming forward the most in your energy. First of all, there is an entity that resides within what you would perceive as a parallel existence. This is an entity who is living under the same name, the same auspices of the Oversoul, as well as the same connection of heart center. 
but a vibration that is slightly different. It is one that represents hardships that you went through before in your existence were much harder. So what this entity is willing to share with you is that although you have seen certain things within your existence that have been difficult, understand there are versions of you who have went through much more difficulty. They believe that in telling you this, you will find a much higher amount of ease when you revisit these negative things in your past. This is one thing. The second entity is bringing forward information. It expresses to you most directly that it has been trying to communicate with you in your sleep state, that you have had a dream in which an entity that you would perceive as blue or blue-green skin with large black eyes has been trying to communicate with you, but every time that you are in the same vicinity as this entity, there is no deep communication that is made. There is always misunderstandings in telepathic communications as well as within body language signals in the interpretation of what you are trying to elaborate to this entity, as well as what it is trying to communicate with you. Now, when you understand these ideas, understand that this is a symbolism of your consciousness. This is something that is telling your own higher mindset that you are not able to communicate to these entities in your dream state because there is friction and misunderstandings within yourself. Now, we understand the human condition very well. We understand what it is to be human as we have connected with them for thousands of years in your existence. What we can tell you is that all of the things that you take for granted in your life, the excitements, the pleasantries, the things that make your existence happy without your awareness of it, refocus upon these things. Try to move out all of the menial things in your existence, all of the things that matter not all of the things that seem to weigh upon your shoulders that are not relevant to you, but they are only relevant because you accept them as a portion of your reality. Refocus your center. Take away your misunderstandings of what it is to be human. Accept the things within your existence that make you whole, not that put holes inside of you. And when you are able to do this, when you are able to truly elaborate upon the gracious nature of consciousness, the way that your oversoul loves you unconditionally as well as the universal consciousness itself, this can help bore outward some of the misunderstandings that is made within your energy within you. Once this is achieved, once this occurs, the entity was trying to connect with you in a very profound and deep way will be able not only to communicate with you in this dream state in a more vivid way, in a more important way, in a less resistant way, it will also open your memory to remembering this dream. This is vital for you to remind yourself of. If you are able to receive these two informations, perhaps this can help you within your growth. You are loved. Thank you. Wow. Thank you so much. <laughs> yes. We are very grateful. Thank you. We are not hearing communication. Perhaps your microphone is muted. Yes, I did mute myself. <laughs> I yes. thought I would clear up the line a little by muting myself, and I'm glad you were on top of that. Okay, so we're ready for the next question from the next caller. And caller, you are from the 209 area code, and I'm putting you on the air. Hello, caller. Uh, yes, um, can you hear me? Yes. yes. Hello? Can you hear me? Yes. Hello? Hello? We are hearing yeah, we you. Can hear you. We can hear you. Okay, I'm sorry. Um, I have a, a, first of all, I want to say thank you so much to, to the two of you and the entity talking. Thank you so much. Um, I have two questions. One is, uh, one is, <clears throat> Uh, is there a reason, or is there a reason, um, should I say, that there's more of a contact from the higher entities that, such as yourself that you're coming through to the earth now for any specific reason, such as the ascension coming up, or has this always been the case, or, or is basically is my question, or is there more communication because of that? 
Yes. First of all, we will answer the idea with you are welcome for bringing this communication as you did thank us in your previous statement. Secondly, we will say that yes, there is an uptake within communication of entities of our nature due to the fact that in the year that you would see 2012, there was an energy that prevented as clear or as deep contact with many entities. This was an energetic level that did not allow entities that are perceived as type ones to communicate or interfere with humans. Now, speaking to an entity in the way that I am and interfering are two separate ideas. First of all, when you are communicating, you are doing it of your own accord. You are doing it as a part of your co-creation. But there are many entities who will not perceive it in this way. Therefore, it was not the restriction of the communication, but the restriction of who is able to hear the communication. This is the first side. Secondly, after that time period, when the energy was lifted, when more communication was available, your consciousness as a collective was also on the uptake. This allowed perception and accepting of energies that we were presenting to be more understood. Now, again, in the third point of the second question, or the second portion of our answer to your one question, we will say this, that in the collective consciousness's desire to expand in their own idea of what ascension is, the power of information is increasing within your race, as is the frequency of connection to your race. We are helping you help yourself. Thank you. You are loved. Wow. Thank you so much. You're loved equally back. Um, I yeah. have another question. Um, um there is a religious group um, on, on our planet by the name Baha'i, and the founder uh, claims that he is in spirit the return of all of the holy manifestations of the past, and that he um, is in spirit all of them, and this um, founder is the one that will be guiding mankind in the near future towards a... Uh, I guess, total unity uh, of all of mankind. Uh, do you have any feeling or uh, understanding of this, of the Baha'i faith uh, and the, the claims made by the founder? The Baha'u'llah is the, is the title. Yes, what we can tell you most directly is that all religions have offered a way for yourself to be revived and to be saved by many external entities. What we can provide you as entities who are willing to connect with you from a type 1 perspective is the concept that there will never be an entity who is external who can provide your own soul's release, your own soul's expansion, your own soul's desire to be complete. What you can offer others is a manifestation of this entity who is external in nature coming into your existence to help co-create an experience of the same nature. So all things that are religious in nature, all things that provide the one and only truth to be saved from this truth is only a manifestation of your desire to be saved externally. When you take the reins back into your own hand to see the power that you have as a creator consciousness to manifest the things in which you desire the most from your own consciousness without projecting it upon secondary or external entities, you will see that you are all already saved, that the only thing that will make you feel saved is seeing your power, seeing that you are already divine, and feeling your divinity. Thank you. You are loved. Yes, thank you, caller. Um, and that was a wonderful answer to that question. Um, yeah. Thank you, Ardith. We're going to move yes. on to another caller now. Uh, we have a caller from the 650 area code. And caller, you are now on. Hi there. This is Naomi. How are you? Good. Uh, good, good, good. So I was calling because I know we are experiencing a major shift and I've been told by a very reliable source that um, the month of February should be a very 
prominent um, game changer for a lot of us, light workers and healers, et cetera. Can you elaborate on that, please, and maybe make it more specific for myself? That would be amazing. Thank you. What month is this that you were saying? For February. Yes, the February energy is the release of much of the suppressive energy in your perception or perceptions of consciousness that are being released from the time of your soul system December until the third week of February. In that period, things will feel very suppressed or very down-pushed. It is not truly a nature of an energy that is being pushed downward. It is only the release of negative or restricting beliefs that you are trying to face in these times. February will be a great release of the feeling of suppression with an understanding that the true nature of what had occurred was your own expansion, not suppression. This is the energy that we are receiving for the third, wo- third week Excuse us, third week in February, and this is what we can share of this. Thank you. Yes, uh, thank you, Naomi, and um, that's you are very loud. interesting. So that so that began with uh, December twenty first. So it's like a two month span. It was not beginning in that area specifically. This is when the energy was the highest within this idea. It had begun at least one month and one week before this. For others, it will depend on their own energy in which time they are able to perceive this in. Mm. What we mean by this more specifically is that one entity will perceive this within December, in the third week of December. Others will feel it in the first week of January. Others will have felt it in November. And all of these entities are experiencing similar energies, manifesting them in different ways due to the awareness of the energies, due to the awareness of their own consciousness and all of the ways that these co-create together. Yeah, massive massive clearings going on. Yes. So thank you, Naomi, for that wonderful question. And we're going to move on now to a caller from the 206 area code, which is Washington State, I believe. Hello, 206. Hello, can you hear me? Yeah. Okay, Daniel and Aradef, it's really nice to hear you. This is Stanley and Risha calling you from Seattle. Hi. We are now we are now two zero six rather than three six zero. Yeah. Um, there's been a major major life change with us as our house went into the mighty Pacific Ocean and now we're back into Seattle. And so, Eredef, I would like to have you talk about the solstice and the energies that have happened since then and possibly how it can relate to Risha and I and, and what we're um we're sort of waiting for the next step in the adventure. Yes. First of all, let us greet you back in expressing uh, a greetings and hello. Secondly, we will express that within the solstice period, as we had covered previously, there are much energies that are forcing you to see things in a way that is sometimes not as desirable as what you would perceive. But in the time period that is leading for the next few weeks, you will begin to see more and more of the positive attributes of losing the home in that area have. You will find new excitements in the area that you are in. You will also find a feeling of perhaps needing to move further within your journey of traveling around the United States in different areas, as well as throughout the world, if it calls to you, that will lead you to more excitement. The energies that are coming within this area that is deemed the third week of February, this is when things will begin to take this corner for you. You have been one of the entities as a couple that have experienced it all the way backwards from the very first point of period feeling it through the source this time, now you will feel energies going downhill. And you will feel it not feeling as negative to you, not feeling as hurtful, and seeing more of the light of what has happened in more ways in which you can use this experience 
for your personal expansion as well as for your collective expansion. And we are speaking of collective as both of you as a couple, as well as within your own personal expansion. Mm. Well, thank you. And we actually saw, I saw us over there with, with Daniel and Lana for, for a short period of time, too. So. Oh, um, wow. Visiting. Well, that would yeah, be great. We're, we're, uh, we're just sort of marking time right here and um, watching the fire and and really, really enjoying these conversations tonight. Thank you yes. both. We are appreciating your calling. conversation as well. You are loved, both of you. And we are moving on now, moving down the coast to San Diego to an 858 area code, and you are... With us now. Well, hold on. Yeah, there you are. Eight five eight. Hello, Daniel. Um, Hello. Artist. Thank you. Thank you. This is Anya and Bruce and Pierre. And Hi. We'd li- Hi. How are you? Good. Uh, we'd like to know about uh, any further adventures for us, and specifically for me, is there an entity or something that's uh, interrupting my sleep patterns. Thank you. Yes, and thank you as well. We will first start off by expressing when the three of you are connecting more deeply as well as your extension within uh, localized groups, internet connections, entities with same interests, the more of them that you find in your existence, the more that you will find your excitements coming to the forefront. You have already seen this upon the smaller scale of three entities within a smaller group expanding outward. So be mindful of the amount of energy that you are able to put in a co-creation can be very dependent on the outcome. This is why many entities who sit within vibrational similarities are often experiencing more of the things that they desire than they would be able to within their own consciousness, even if their consciousness is highly excited and less resistant. For instance, your CE5s, you're calling upon entities to come to you in a physical manifestation of a ship. These entities are getting more experiences with more entities. Be aware of this as well. Secondly, we wish to express that within your own sleep state, There are many entities who are connecting to you directly in the sleep state. This is only affecting your sleep state because when these entities are connecting to you, there is still subconscious fears of letting go fully of what you are, of who you are, and connecting directly from your heart to theirs. There is an idea or assumption that if the entities are not who they say they are or if they have a benevolent nature or secondary reason to connect with you, that this can be some negative experience for you. Let us express that when you come in excitement, that when you come in the highest vibration of acceptance, love, not only for the MC that you are connecting to, but also for yourself, you will see that you will not attract any entity but the ones who are connecting at the same polarity that you are. That when you connect to these entities most directly, that you will find an entity that is fitting for the nature of vibration that you desire, and this sleep state interruptions will be at a much higher minimum. Thank you. You all are loved. Thank you so much. That was wonderful. Beautiful. Yes. Thanks. Thanks, Anya. All right. Um, we're going to move on now to a, another caller. From the 631 area code, if that's you, you're on the air. Hi, how are you? Good. Thank you. Thank you so much for taking this call. I guess my question would be in trying to align with my higher self, with my oversoul, what is it that you see that perhaps I could be doing that either I'm not doing or um, need to look at a little more closely? Yes, first of all, we will make a generalization. This is something that is useful for all entities in all walks of life, in all mindsets. First of all, the very first thing is staying in the now moment. Many of you 
are attracting ideas from your past, believing that what was in the past was leading yourself and your energy to be in the area in which it is now. This is the first thing that you can work upon. Secondly, looking too far in the future does the same effect with the same concept of living in that now moment. Secondly, when you are trying to manifest something, your expectations are one layer of the problem. But to further this into something that many do not expand upon is expectations of a positive nature. Many entities believe that if I expect something and it is positive, that this will help along the manifestation. This is not true. If you are expecting to manifest, let us say, a trip to Hawaii, and you are thinking of this very strongly and very deeply, and you are thinking that if you take a plane, you will have a way to win or to be given tickets, and this is your manifestation at work. First of all, experience an idea that says, I wish to travel. It is a more general manifestation, and if your energy is meant to co-create with Hawaii, it will. If you are just desiring the traveling in itself, to a lovely designation, you are now eliminating all places upon the earth except for Hawaii. You have limited your manifestations to a small degree. Try to be as neutral as you can in your thought presses, processes of manifestation. This can help grow. Now, when you are looking at your own energy, very specifically, judgment is of a nature within yourself that looks upon yourself and with the self-judgment, it brings along many energies that are not befitting of manifesting the reality in which you desire. This is also a very common problem for many humans. We are going to say most humans on one level or another. They are not necessarily self-deprivating, but what they are doing is looking at themselves in negative ways, and this does not help their energy flow. If you desire to truly look into yourself and see the greatness that you are, this can alleviate most of your perceptionary problems that you face in your existence. So, what we suggest to you personally is when you begin to beat upon yourself, when you begin to look upon yourself and judging others, accept yourself, even in judgment of others. When you begin to judge, you look at yourself deeply and say, I cannot judge I am being a bad person for judging. This means that you are double judging yourself. This brings twice as much energy upon you that is negative. Be easy upon yourself even when you are judging. Try to release the judgment from yourself and then you will find there is no need to judge many others around you. This can help your own personal growth very much as it will all of yours if you desire to take that path. Secondly, be aware of your dream state. This has been a theme within our speaking this evening. It is not accidental. There are many entities that connect with you in dream states, but you are not bringing this awareness through to your awakened state. What you can do is work with many exercises, as there are many teachers and many variances of exercises that have been taught to humanity. The one that has worked for Rob very easily and the one that has helped many entities in his place is an expression of leaving your body to relax one part at a time, expressing to yourself a mantra or an intent repetitively until you are sleeping that expresses, I am awake in my sleep state, I am connecting to entities, I will remember this communication, so on, etc. If you are able to do these things, this will help your communication come, not just in memory, but in energy as well, to the forefront of your conscious awareness. Thank you, you are loved. Thank you so thank you so much. Thank you. Yes, you thank are you very caller. welcome. All right. And one more caller from six four six area code. You are yes. now on the air. Hello. Greetings, how's everyone? Greetings, how's everyone Greetings. today? I'm doing great. Yeah. Um I guess my question was pretty much uh um, I guess I had a, a question about the moon. I wanted to know, I had uh, just noticed that there was just, you know, 
the the, the way that the moon uh, showed itself for the past uh, years prior to like the past say say five years that I've witnessed it. Father Dust, uh, for one <laughs> moment, would you please begin the question at the beginning? There was a malfunction in technology which did not allow us to get the full representation of what it was that you were saying. We apologize for this. You are loved. Oh, no problem. I was just curious about the moon I had witnessed, uh, the you know, the phases of the moon a particular way prior to the, say, past five years, you know, the way that it's uh, it's shown itself. Right now, it shows itself in a very different manner. So I was just curious, is there a reason for this? Yes, there are many scientific reasons for this, but we'll give this in the most simple explanation that we are able to. When the moon is going around your planetary consciousness, there are energies that vibrate between the two. This is a co-creation of two collective consciousnesses singly dancing, not only gravitationally or vibrationally, but also energetically. When they are going around physically, the physics that you are seeing is one entity moving around the other, facing the same way at all times. But your Earth is not on the same axis. It is on a slight tilt axis. So this will give you a small differential in the way that the moon is perceived every year. But this is not all. Your moon itself is not going around in a direct 90 degree angle from your uh, planetary consciousness or what we are saying is it's not on a direct horizontal line it is slightly off several small degrees now when it is going around and your planet is also on its axis moving its axis turn point amongst every year and every rotation due to the oblong um, revolution or we are not sure if this is revolution or yes it is going around your star to that same degree so now you are having a planet that is slightly tilted or a moon that is slightly tilted with a planet that is fully tilted and each time it goes around this oblong surface around your star it is giving slight different perspective from year to year you will notice that if you look more deeply into the history of how your moon is perceived to, let us say, 5,000 years ago, when many entities were always drawing the perspective of the moon, and you will see 1,000 years ago, and then your present day, you will see that the perspective of the moons have changed drastically. And it is to do with the variance of not only the angle of revolving around the planet's axis, but also revolving around your star and the way that your moon revolves around your planet. This is the physics of why it does this. The energy of these two entities are why the physics are what they are. These are two separate entities creating on an energetic as well as a subatomic level consciousness of a co-creational type, much as when you and your friend are in one room doing two different things, but you are co-creating one experience, if this makes sense to you. Uh, it does. It does. Thank you. I mean, you yes. know, it's <laughs> thank you so Wonderful. much. Yes, thank you, you are very caller. welcome. You are loved. Thank you. Thank you. All right, if, uh, I would like to ask you another question, if I could. Yes. We hear a lot. There's a, it seems to be uh, that there are a lot of uh, a preponderance of channeled beings from the Pleiades. And a lot of times we hear uh, people just refer to beings as Pleiadian. And when Rob was talking earlier about uh, your star system, he mentioned that there are many planets, many inhabited planets in the Pleiadian star system. And what I'm curious about is this idea that we could somehow lump together um, all the beings in the Pleiades and just refer to them as the Pleiadians, where it seems as though there there would be very different uh, um, entities on different worlds or di vi different entities uh, on the same world of much more variety. Is there some overriding uh, theme that uh, the Pleiades is all about and that's why 
they uh, the, the, all of you get lumped together, or um, what what more do you have to give us on this uh, this idea of the Pleiades star system and all the beings from there? Let us express this that all of the entities that reside within the Pleiades or Pleiades or whichever pronunciation you desire are quite different from one another. There are many type 1s, there are many type 2s, there are many from each density, many from each types of races. There are humanoids, insectoids, reptilians, benevolent, malevolent, all of these things, far and few between are the entities that are very, very similar. Now, hmm. the reason your own Earth perspective lumps all of these entities within this large area into one group as much as when you are looking upon your own planet, the perceptions are linked to a thought process. When an entity from Australia looks into the United States, they will say these entities are American. When you look into Europe and they look upon someone who is in Mexico, they will say this person is American. They are North American. Now, when you talk to an entity from the United States, they will only see the border of the United States of America as American, and then they will break it down even further. Because they are from that area, because they are familiar mm -hmm. with the 50 states and two territories and all of the capitals and all of the cities that are broken down within the states, they are able mm -hmm. to speak more in depth about the segregation that you have perceived. Now you can say there are... Michigan people, there are people from Grand Rapids, Detroit, Kalamazoo. There are portions of people from every city or county within that state. But someone who is not from this region would not know this. They see mm. a country with its borders drawn and they put them all into one area. This is why your Earth perspective minds are drawn to placing all of the Pleiadian energies into one lump sum definition. It is the perception of the earth humans in their being so used to being segregated and so used to also lumping all things in in one category simultaneously that it gives you the wonderful perspective that all Pleiadians are one. Now, what we can say to you is that if human minds were able to do this with the entire universe, they would begin to see the oneness in which they are, and this would be of great excitement to us. And this, <laughs> perhaps, if you are not aware, was our attempt at humor, and we are very excited <laughs> about this. You are right. <laughs> is, there, is there something about the Pleiades uh, and the color blue? I've heard that before, too, that there's something uh, Pleiadian uh, beings uh, are sometimes... Uh, represented by blue light or something like that? Yes, this is for three reasons. The first reason is that in your eye, when you are looking at the Pleiadian region in a telescope or with your bare eye, it resembles a very pale blue energy. This is one mm. reason. The second reason mm. that many of the races that are mostly in contact with human entities project that are blue co-creational energies. This means that they are using blue energy to co-create with the communication with you. Uh, for instance, when a Pleiadian entity is being channeled, they are using the throat chakra, which is a blue color in nature. Now, mm -hmm. thirdly, when you are looking at the galaxy, it is an entity much as your Earth is, much as you as an individual entity is. There are certain points and areas within the entirety that are considered energetic focal points, ones that you perceive as chakras. If you see your own seven chakras, you also see that the planet has uh, seven main chakras with more sub-chakras, such as your physical bodies, this is the same going outward into all areas. When you look at your galaxy, it also has what you would perceive as chakra energies, focal points of energy that intersect, mm -hmm. that have to do with different portions of evolution of the entirety entity in its conscious evolution. The Pleiades is an entity that is blue in nature, so you would make this akin to your throat chakra energy. So, right. for example's sake, we would say the Pleiades energy is the throat chakra of the galaxy. 
Hmm. Wow. What a great answer. And that yes. might explain why so many people are channeling Pleiadians too, because of the throat chakra link to yes. channeling. This is very, very yeah. true. Yeah. So, um, Ardis, do you have time for another caller with a question? Or, I mean, I know you have time, but I don't know what Rob's uh, desire is yes, here. Can we, you, can, yes, we may take one caller if you desire. Yeah, there's a 337 area code person that called in. Hello, 337. Hi. Hi, how are Hi. you? Good. Um, my What's name is Candice from Columbus. I would love to ask about my love life if they may pick up, pick up on somebody that's come my way, like um, a long-term relationship kind of a thing. Yes, if you are able to ask us your question, we will let you know if we are able to answer it in a manner that you would perceive as acceptable or to your liking. Okay. What is it specifically that you wish to know about this relationship? Um, I would love to, to see um, who is this person that's coming into my life or anything like that. Um, are you seeing meeting somebody or is there somebody that I do know that's that will be a significant part of my life or I don't know. Well there are many different ways that you are able to perceive this. First of all, your free will will allow you to do many things. It will be up to your excitements, your actions, your thought processes and your beliefs. But we are able to see what Treble Yitney calls the many probabilities. Now, we are able to see what is most likely within your energy in this moment, and what we see is that there is an entity that you are already aware of that is connected with you upon a friendship level that is a very high probability. We also see that there is an entity that you can connect to within the next four months that will be of a high probability. But again, if you change your mind, if you change your heart, if you change your decisions within your own vibration and beliefs within those vibrations, then you will change all of this energy. So we do not often tell entities or people about their future, for it is always moving. Yes. Because I do have a, um, wow, I do have a guy, uh, uh, he's a little older than I am. He's a very, very, very good friend. And, you know, of course, I really do like him. Um, I would love to know if he feels the same way about me. You know, the fact that you saying it's a big probability with him, that I guess it says a lot. Um, there is a probability in which you are able to connect, but we will never speak on the accord of another entity as we do not have their perception in our own. We are only able to see the energy on the external portions of their consciousness that they are desiring to share with the universe at this time. Treble Yitney, if you were to have asked him, he would not have told you even this much because his belief is without the permission of an entity, he will not connect to their energy. But I am willing to look as long as they are willing to share, and this is all that we are able to see within him. Okay. Thank you, caller. Thank you. Uh, wow. You got what you needed. <laughs> and um, thank you, Aradif, for taking one more call. And uh, thank you, yeah. Rob. And, you, you know, um, it, it's been a pleasure to uh, connect with you tonight, Aradif, and I really enjoyed listening to all the answers you provided. So it's been yes. a pleasure and let to us have express you. That. Uh, yes, and we are sorry to have interrupted you, but our pleasure and excitement was at a point where we were willing to express it at the same time. So what we can tell <laughs> you and what we may express to you is that our excitement level is that of a similar fashion. It is very exciting. It is very fun and very insightful to have connected to all of you in this evening. For this evening, we bid you adieu. Thank you. Thank you. Have a good night. Yes. <laughs> now I'm just Let waiting for go. Rob. 
<clears throat> it was great. It was so much fun. Oh, good. Yeah, we we got so many callers and so many questions answered, and I even asked two questions, and that was fun for me. So, Did you? Yeah. Did you get some fun answers? Yeah, I noticed that there's a real similarity between when you tone for uh, Ardith and when I tone for the Hathors and when you tone for Treb and when I tone for the Creators and there's a, you know, there's so many similarities in uh, the sounds and the and the cadence and the rhythm and all the different ways and uh, the yeses that Treb's, you know, that you're channeling from Treb and that I'm channeling from the Creators. So I've just been seeing all these similarities and I you know that struck me uh initially so I just wanted to share that with you too that um you know they 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 gave a really um a really detailed and and uh they expounded upon that a lot uh in their answers Oh wow. Well, yeah. I like to hear that too. It's um you know mm. something I've noticed I I never had run into a channeler who did toning like I did until I met you. And um, it's actually quite amazing because I'd never heard your toning. I'd only read your channeling on Facebook yeah. before that. And the first time I heard it, I was like, oh, my God, I got another friend who channels in the same way I do. So it was amazing. And I've noticed um, not necessarily the similar cadence like you had said, but I noticed that there was just an overall same feeling to it. And I, I think I need to break yeah. it down to a more um, uh, a deeper level so I can actually hear those uh, specific cadences and the vibration tones like you were talking about. Yeah. Yeah, I, I'm a person who, uh, who who has a really hard time learning about music and musical things. I I, I took like two years of voice lessons and every time my teacher would try and teach me something, you know, technical or, yeah, it, it just would go one in, one out, one in, ah, in one ear and out the other. <laughs> so, <laughs> so I, I'm not real like technical when it comes to, uh, to sound, but, but I can, I guess I can hear it, you know, I can, I can sense it and I can hear it the the similarities uh, they're they're not lost on me even with my lack of uh, ability to speak coherently about music in any way or sound or so yeah it's uh it's pretty cool it's a pretty cool yeah, uh synchronicity for you and me to have that in common I love that and that's that's amazing i I am I uh, I did well in school with the whole music thing, but I I never took it past like middle school, and I, I kicked myself in the butt for it. But uh, sometimes I'm able to pick some of that stuff up. Um, but I don't think I don't think the technical learning of music was my highest passion. It was just being able to play it and, and listen to it and stuff too. So that's kind of amazing, though, how how the synchronicity works out. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> Yeah. Excuse me, I'm going to get a little water. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Sure. Um, so I'll just say that uh, if you want to connect more with Rob and his work, you can go to trebchanneling.com. That's T-R-E-B channeling.com. Uh, that's where you can find out uh, all that uh, Rob has going on, all the offerings, uh, private sessions, recordings, events, online events. He's doing so much and uh, giving so much of himself and so uh, definitely check out Rob's website and uh, definitely check out the event that Rob and I will do together on February 7th that should be a lot of fun uh, we're going to channel we're each going to channel for you all and uh, it's going to be great so is there anything else that you would like to announce before we say good night um, just, uh, uh, my appreciation and gratitude for having, uh, you having me on the show and for having this availability for people, um, to listen to guests and to call on and to communicate with you. Um, in my heart, these shows are very important and this network's very important. It, it really gives the opportunity of people, 
um, to have their hearts heard and, and to manifest and co-create with friends who are really similar in their beliefs and their and their ideals. And it's important, you know, and, and I'm grateful for you for that, and I'm grateful for all listeners. And um, thank you for having me on the show. Yeah, thank you all listeners and callers tonight. Uh, you guys definitely made made it a lot more interesting <laughs> to have a show. So uh, thank you all. And uh, uh, if you want to connect more with, with me, uh, it's danielstranton.com. And I have another Enlightenment Evolution Network person on my show next week, Rachel Archelaus has agreed to be on my show next week, so uh, tune into that. And uh, thank you, Rob. Thank you, Kalina. Uh, I oh, love you guys. Thank I, you. I hope you and have we love a you too. great night. Yeah. And that's it for uh, for this episode, bye. everyone. So love you guys. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> love you, bye, Kalina. Love you. All right, everyone. Take care. DanielScranton.com for more about me and what I'm doing, and uh, I hope you all enjoyed the show. Good night.